Hey everyone, it's Shireen Simon from blackprint.com and we are filming another episode of Voices and Vibes. And today we're sitting with a stylist, a loctician, Michelle. Michelle, can you go ahead and introduce yourself and the name of your business? Okay, so I'm Michi Hair. Um, my name is Michelle and that is the name of my business, Michi Hair. Nice. You guys can find me on Instagram and TikTok, of course, Michi Hair. Um, I'm trending on all platforms in the same Michi Hair. I'm trending on all platforms, just so you know, right from the beginning. <laughs> this wasn't even the wrap up. This is how we started. <laughs> yes. So awesome. yeah, you can find me on all platforms at Michi Hair. So just like you said, I am a stylist and I'm going to rep uh, this podcast um, on behalf of stylists. I'm going to okay. speak from like the perspective of a stylist, not as a, as an individual person, but more like for stylists and how, you know, my story relates to myself being a stylist. Okay. Makes I, sense. Makes sense. It does yeah. help because we do, um, the whole point of voices and vibes is really to amplify the voices of black owned businesses. Okay. So it's great to meet with you. Now you have done my hair once. Yes. yes. yes, yes um, yes. when my lock dirty just started, yes, yes, but yes, tell yes. everyone how long you've had your business for. Okay. So, um, in retrospect, I've been a stylist for about 20 years. Oh, wow. Um, I've okay. always worked, you know, in a salon with, you know, stylists, other stylists. I've worked under stylists. Um, I've been an assistant. I've worked my way up from, you know, the bottom pretty much until now I have my own business and I'm doing my own thing. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I've been doing my own thing for about... 12 years oh wow wow that's a long time mm, congratulations yeah about, something, about something to be proud for right, right? Cheers, cheers on that on cheers that. on that yeah. yeah so it's a long time most black businesses cheers. they say don't um go past five years so 12 wow. years is extensive oh i've had a journey it's, yeah it's been it's been a fun journey it's been exciting um how did you start oh okay how did i start um I started on my dolls, uh, my Barbie dolls at seven years old. <laughs> nice, nice. No, I mean, so what were you were you braiding there, like giving them always, pain rolls? No, what kind of style? I was, were you I was always giving my dolls um, styles and things like that. So I knew I had a passion for hair okay. um, since I was a kid. Like I always knew that I should at least get into the business of hair because I was passionate about the hair. Yeah. However, on this journey, I've definitely realized that it's not only the passion of the hair, but it comes with. Um, teaching and educating others and just you know going through my own experiences you know messing up things in the salon and but, trying to but figure that's, out that's a ways. part of the journey that, that's a part of the journey correct but I want to go back a bit before you go all the way down to your journey sure um how was the support in the household when you like did you claim I'm going to be a stylist and like what was the support from your parents or your your household well, for one, it was a hobby at first, and mm -hmm. of course, it was just something I did in high school, just kind of doing it for fun. Were you and doing so, people's hair? I was doing. School? I was. I was doing other people's hair, kind of for fun. Like you weren't getting paid. I wasn't. I was like fourteen. Girl, I was. In I grade was getting nine. paid. <laughs> so I was in grade nine. I was. Okay. Getting, I was basically just doing it for fun as a hobby. And right. so one day, my mom was like, "You know, you're doing this like every day. Why don't you charge ten dollars? Like, yeah. you know." And so I started charging ten dollars for like braids or just like cornrows and little things like that. Okay. And eventually. Eventually, um, I felt I dropped out of school. Okay. Um, oh, what grade? Um, I want to say grade, grade 11. Oh, no. So oh, no. just before grade 11, I kind of dropped out because that was around the challenging time of, you know, my life. I was, you know, trying to figure out myself. I had influence. I was influenced by other people. You it's know? okay. And, it's okay. You know, so I kind of took a couple of years out of school um, and then had my first child. Once I had my first child, it's like the game changed. Yeah. Then How I had old to, were you when you had your first baby? Almost 17. Oh, that's okay. Don't do that. So don't, no, no. don't do that. You, you have, so what I know now is that you haven't watched my very first, my very first or my second podcast. Okay. So go watch my second podcast, okay. the person I interviewed as well. Okay. They started their business young. They had their baby young. It happens. It happens. It ha and it's part of our life. And Correct. you're still here doing remarkable things. Correct. 12, like 20 years later, Correct. right? Correct. So there's no shame Correct. in our journey. It's a, it's a part of who we become correct yeah correct yeah. so like i said once i had my first child and i realized that i had to like figure pretty much figure out my life figure out like 
what am I doing? I'm 17. I got a baby. I figured out that I got some gifts because I can do hair. And right. So what was business picking up at this no, point? No, I was still a kid. So I was right. still 17, you know. Right. Um, True. When okay. I went back to school, because I realized, you know, I had to figure something out. Thank God an apprenticeship found me. Wow. Um, and so... Uh, and and what was it at what was it like at that time getting an apprenticeship for a young black female? Like, it was, was an there absolute, other... it was an absolute don't do it. It was a red flag, don't right. go that route. It was right. super From other risky. people or in the world at that time, yeah. having an apprenticeship um, and looking forward to your own business was not something that as a black person yeah. even or it just wasn't a thing. Yeah, people just <clears throat> want people to like kind of go down that corporate the route. And the employment yeah. route where you're yeah. like an employee for the rest of your life. You work yeah. your way up. That was the way that I was raised. So any yeah. other way was like you're going against the grain. Yeah, so, so that means your parents were obviously were not entrepreneurs. They were not entrepreneurs. They were mm -hmm. employees or, you know, they were in the corporate world. So yeah. they got the check every week. It was sure, you know, yeah. and they were just like, what are you doing? You know, yeah. you're going to school, get something sure. Apprenticeship might not be the route, you know, right. and that was 20 years ago. And so where did you end up going on your journey from there? So I ended up make, meeting a man um, named Mikhail Jackman. Oh, I know um, Mikhael. So okay. Yeah, Mikhael. he's in my hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I, I, I got ordained that I meet him in school, and so I met him. Wow, um, that's a long time. Wait, was he doing hair back then? He's been doing hair for maybe over 35 years. Like, Mike has been... Holy... Yeah. So my kids went to school with his kids. You see what I mean? So yeah. He, and he's still very passionate about the business. He's yes. still mostly my inspiration he's still very passionate so I mean that's somebody that I look up to I will always look up to thank you Mike yeah um, but I mean once I met him I got serious in the business and I started um, working under him he started training me I was working full-time in the salon I had uh, you know two children at the time because now we're progressing um, and I took it serious. I was, yeah. I, I traveled to Atlanta. I've been Ooh. all around the world. So you're doing, doing hair shows? Uh, absolutely. I was doing hair shows. I was Wait, doing how education. old were you at this point? 21. Okay. And so still one baby at this point? Two at the time. Two babies. Two okay. at the time. Okay. So, so how was the juggling? Were you still living at home? I was living on my own. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I was living on why my do you, own. Why do you do, why do you say, why do you <laughs> say things like that? Because it's like, living it's, on my because own. Because at that time it was so badass to be that independent Girl, you, know I mean? you don't know so. who you're talking to though like <laughs> so i had my daughter at 21 okay. just to just to level set exactly okay so okay. there's like you don't have to do that yeah 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 right like i want you to be like well i had my baby at 21 yes. <laughs> and even though people were like i want you to like talk, it's yeah yeah it's, it's my story happened. i, I, I yeah. definitely own my story so this is still my my story so it is what it is yeah um, yeah you know, i had my children young I, just, I, just just don't do this like, yeah right that's a bad <laughs> you know what anyone who thinks it's a yeah. bad thing i guess that's a you problem yeah, because yeah. you lived through it yeah absolutely. you know your own struggles that you went through absolutely. and your own growth that absolutely. you went through right absolutely. so we're not gonna like you know, we're proud of where we are now, so we're not going to downplay it, right? Absolutely. And say, love thee. And, yeah. and, you know, it's not that I'm promoting going out there and having babies young, but Correct. honestly, I'm so happy that I had my babies young. I still do agree with that. Because yeah, I like now I, I can change, say that. Yeah, I wouldn't change it for the world. Like, And they compelled me to move till tomorrow. You know, exactly. they, they compelled me to do better and to just, like, they were watching me the whole time. So I just always felt like... If I never did it for myself at the time, I was doing, doing it for, for your them. babies. Yep. You know, yep. so they, they definitely saved me in somewhat of a way. And so, like I said, I went gung-ho in, yeah. in the hairdressing business to support them. And it definitely supported myself and my family. Yeah. It was fun in the... In so, the hold on, hold on. Yeah. So, the family... So, is this also, like, also being able to give back to the house that you left um to a degree or just or just really your immediate I, family well my immediate family at the time and i mean as 20 years later i'm i'm able to give back to my of you course. know to, to my other families you, yeah. you know what i mean so now yeah. i can extend past that um at the time it was definitely my independence yep. you know that was what supported myself and my two children at the time yeah at, at yeah. that time right yeah. so, and, and that being able to have that independence and not rely on a check every two weeks oh, or every was, week or even change because at that age you're doing smaller jobs. You're not doing like, I'm not going to say not meaningful jobs. Are you doing job? You're doing jobs. You're not doing a career. Correct. And you're already down that career path. I was being trained. I was being groomed into the career path. Like, yeah. You know, because I was working mentored. under somebody. Or yeah, 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 exactly. Like, so mentored basically into being the entrepreneur that I am today. Yeah. Basically, you know, yeah. so there's been ups and downs, goods and bads, but overall it's been a fun journey in the hair industry. Yeah. For sure. And I would say that, um, I will see your page and every once in a while I'll see somebody in your chair and I'm like, 
Wait a minute. What's Mar? That's Marcia. Yeah. So people know people. Yes. Yeah. So people know people. Wait. So yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I've definitely. I've definitely visited a few. Or people have. You know, I've interacted with a lot of people from a different like walks of life. You know? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. That that's also part of the journey. You yeah. Know? And that's part of like what I've actually encountered myself. I've even done Chris Bosch's hair. Wow. Yeah, I was wow. doing his hair for about three years while he was Straight? in Canada. Wow. Something like that. So are you still hiring? Because there might be other ballers out there. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Most definitely. Like, it's always been my passion to do, of course, celebrity hair and, mm -hmm. um, you know, things like that. And it's just a matter of timing and alignment. But yeah. I'm, I'm definitely open to that. I used to do it a lot. And it's it's fulfilling. It's, yeah. it's a little different side of the business, but it's... It's fulfilling. Yeah. It's, it's something I can talk about today. I want to say that you have a really nice spirit. Like, I could just feel your spirit and feel your joy. Trust like, me. you're beautiful, but I could just feel the beautiful <sighs> spirit within you Thank coming you. out. I appreciate so, that. Yeah, and your hair is gorgeous. I love that you have, like, multiple colors because I want to do yeah. that with mine yeah. without it breaking. Yeah. But, yes. So I have a little bit of a method behind it. So I, I do color. I'm definitely passionate about color, and I do healthy color. I try yeah. to do healthy color. So um, considering the fact that I have color, I kind of, you know, use myself as a mannequin yeah. most of the time. So I kind of know what works for me, kind of works for my clients. And so with the colors, I kind of use myself as the canvas, and I kind of advertise, say, like, you know, this is what I do. Yeah. You know? It's kind of like a walking billboard. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And I'm sure you got a lot of clients that way, but also through referrals of absolutely, people, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I think I think that just because you recognize that joy and that spirit within me, I think that's what makes my business success, successful. Like yeah. just because people know me as an individual as opposed to, you know, just the pictures I put out on Instagram or just like whatever yeah. I put out. Because what I put out is not my hundred it's not yeah. who i really really am a hundred percent but the people who know who i am they know me and they're just like girl this girl is like you know <laughs> we ride for her and, yeah you know, and i ride for them too so i appreciate um the loyalty over the years too yeah. you know like yeah. you, you don't own people but they're they they act like i own them no well i think know, they come sometimes. back when they when they recognize quality right absolutely and then sure the quality is there but also you're very welcoming right so um, and like I said, I've been to you, I've reached out to you to kind of help me with my son. Um, I end up doing it, but I mean, I've also said to him, oh, I didn't even tell him that you're the loctician. So oh, when good. he comes back up, when we're done the interview, I'll let him know. Yeah. He'll yeah. be like, can you get my mom's hand out of my hair? Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. Be yeah, happy to have a professional. Exactly. It's all Girl, good. That's, it's a all second, good. that's a second. That's a second. I gave her a drink. You know what I mean? Like shading me. <laughs> Shading me. I didn't say that. You can edit that. Okay, yeah, I'm not <laughs> editing nothing. We show it all character. All character. Okay, so your journey is going great. You're working under me, Cal. Um, you, your family is growing. Your independence is growing. And it's been umpteen years. Absolutely. And then when do things start changing? Because recently you've been talking about some changes um, that have been going on. And... Um, why don't you tell us what that change is? Okay, so the change might be the the, the age. It could be my age. Okay. It could just be um, a bunch of factors that I guess I can get into um, that have played a role, stress and things like that, environment, yeah. and just a bunch of things that I might have been suppressing and things like that that I feel physically have been showing their face on my physical body. Yeah, if, right? we, if we don't do the things that we know we're supposed to be doing, at some point, our body is going to be like, listen, yeah, enough is enough. And it's going to like start screaming Correct. louder Correct. and louder Correct. until you start listening. Correct. Right. Correct. So Correct. Um, and I gave her water just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what what have you been experiencing or what what has occurred? OK, so I would say almost a year ago to almost the day or just around this time last oh, wow. year, okay. uh, July, I kind of um, started having an irritant towards something that I wasn't aware of. Okay. So I just found that it was more like an allergy. But wait, wait, um, wait, you're going, you go. So like what was what were you experiencing? Where were you experiencing okay. it? Yeah. So you know what? And what, what do you how did you notice it? OK, so I can even back it up even further. So mm -hmm. if I back it up even further, I can say um, over the years of becoming <clears throat> sorry, um, over the years of becoming like really busy and, you know, just successful in my business, yeah. it, it has now costed me a bit. So but, but that something something always has to give. Correct. So right? um, 
I feel like I should have hired somebody sooner just to okay. kind of implement the help, right? Because, okay. I mean, I feel like at the same time, we're so used to the struggle that mm -hmm. we're like, it's okay, we got it, I can, yeah. I can manage. Yeah. And then when you're self-employed... We're too busy being the strong back then, yeah. <clears throat> right. at and times. Yeah. Correct. And so being the, the entrepreneur that I am, and I'm always going and just multitasking, I, I've been doing that for a long time. I've definitely been hearing my body say, slow down. So you don't have any help? Like I, I do. Well, I'm training my younger daughter. She's okay. going to be 17 in the next, you know, one week or so. But she's been being trained for about two years. Okay. So she's pretty much like... I want to say she's good to go. However, um, she's not like good to go. So I'm right. training my daughter. I'm training um, a son of mine. I'm training my children because they're the immediate family that I do have. However, I would have loved to also hire somebody as well to, yeah. to have that help. Have you ever had an apprentice? Because I know a lot of not. stylists or salon programs, they take on apprentices. I've had, I've had um, maybe an apprentice over the years. Mm -hmm. um, in the salon setting, I've had that, or maybe a few of them over the years. Right. Um, but right now I'm working um, on my own and I'm working right. by myself and I just haven't explored that option just because I do have a four-year-old and I mean, I'm... Oh, you have a four-year-old? I have a four-year-old. So Jeez, girl. How many kids do you have? I have five. Oh, that's so good. I have five, yeah, oh, so but I they're have five spread children. out. Yeah, so it's they're... becoming very common, but we're not going to deflect and talk about children. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're going to go back and talk about what, what, what was that irritant that you were talking about? So I believe, like I said, um... I believe I, I started noticing the biggest problem when I started using um, the latex gloves, those okay. sa those sanitary gloves that the nurses and everyone wears. Were you using them because of COVID, like during that time frame? Was that what? Well, I noticed that. Or was it certain product, like harsher product no, that I was made you decide fine. to start using them? I was fine, but I think it was just the sanitation purposes. I decided to like just use my gloves gung on, you know, gung ho. Every time I washed someone's hair, I made sure I had my gloves on. If I did a chemical service, I had my gloves on, color gloves on so sorry i just want to go back um when did you decide like were you always using gloves over time i feel like I or was did always... you start consistently using them <coughs> like <coughs> after like the covid time i feel like during covid i started using them more so okay you know what i mean so yeah. I, there were things that i was trying to get away with um over the years but mm -hmm. then i guess within the last like two years since covid or three years since covid i've been just you know overly protective sanitary like, yeah. you know what i mean like and everybody so, else out here exactly yeah. exactly but i think there's a science between the gloves and water getting in them and you keeping mm. them on for an, a period of time yeah so when i i'm a i'm a, I'm a hairstylist so i shampoo a lot yeah and so when i shampoo the gloves often get wet on the inside yeah, makes and sense. maybe if you do four shampoos a day three shampoos each head yeah um it starts to i don't know what happened but so over it's the years, probably like it my irritant yeah, like some of the substances within, because I, I don't know of all gloves, but I know that I, like I do my own hair at times, mm -hmm. right? And then you put on gloves and sometimes it has like a weird feeling on the inside. So maybe some of the substance exactly. is like kind of coming off, like it, washing up. Exactly. Out. Or yeah. the powder. Or just yeah. Whatever. Because I've heard nurses talk about like the powder yeah. from the inside. They've been allergic. And so I'm not alone knowing mm -hmm. that I'm not the only person that has had irritants to, you know, the latex gloves or just those nitrile gloves because nitrile right. was also a part of it. Right. So I've been, I was noticing like a little bit of an irritant on my hands and it started getting itchy and I was like, okay, you know. Yeah no big deal polysporin you know just you know regular stuff and then yeah um it just progressively started getting worse right and worse and then um it started july was it painful it became painful when it became open sores because Ooh. now it's like now it's becoming this is from the gloves i assumed right yeah yeah right yeah, yeah, so yeah. i'm this is at the point of me saying i mean okay, you weren't wearing them before right you know so i'm just <laughs> like Okay, let me just pay attention to the body, see how yeah. it's responding. And 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 was there anything else that you might have done differently, like um, pr besides the gloves? Because the gloves, obviously, you um, identified that that's something you started wearing more frequently as like something to help protect yourself, be sanitary for you and your clients during the time frame. But was there anything out of the ordinary in the rest of your lifestyle that you might have been doing I, that you might think could contribute to it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I... I um, Are you going to tell us what it is? Yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> Drum roll, please. <laughs> Take a drink. <laughs> right? So I do... I do have to admit that like a lot of times when we're going through things, we don't actually know what things are. Yeah. 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 Right. And so we can't self-diagnose. Yeah. I think I was depressed, okay. but I can't, I can't say that I was depressed. I, or I can't, I don't know if I was at the time, but yeah. I might've been depressed okay. and I didn't know. Yeah. So as a solution to my depression or as a, 
um, as a way of coping, coping. with mm -hmm. my, my so-called depression that I might have not been aware of, yeah. I, I overworked. Oh, you worked even more. I, I it's almost like to distract you from whatever was... Correct. Maybe, so you probably know what was causing a bit Correct. of the depression. Correct. So you are Correct. trying to keep yourself busy. Correct. So gotcha. I had just recently broke up with my ex. Okay. Um, COVID 2020. Yeah. And then two years later, I was, like I said, up to two years later, I was just overcompensating for the loss of the financial. Yeah. For the fact that, don't worry, I'm okay. Just like, you know, yeah. just to be the like... The lifestyle change. Like I said, um, I feel like... At that time in my life, I was going through a depression that I might not have been able to self-diagnose. Right. And so, um, as a, as me just trying to cope with what I was going through, I believe I just worked to overcompensate for um, just being in my own head. Maybe just right. not being busy, just not dealing with the fact that you know I felt the way that I felt. So mm -hmm. I worked six days a week, yeah. twelve-hour days. You're actually pretty good because I find that like for me, distractions. Um, such as life distractions, whether it's like the partner situation, right? Like you're in a relationship or whatever. Um, some people shut down Correct. and some people go hard, right? As a way of distracting, right? And probably also because your business is also a home business. Correct. Now. Excuse me. Now, now. right? So now. like um, it is like get up and get to work basically. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. So so sorry, so you're you're going harder and is this so you think oh you think that also contributed to Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So you. when you're working twelve hour days, sometimes you lack the food. Yeah. Sometimes you don't use the washroom. These are just the Girl. Behind, the, behind the scenes things. Yeah, this is real yeah. life. Like salon life is like the next client's already here. You've already booked them. So it's and like, you're not trying I just, to have anybody waiting. You, sometimes you're like, okay, let me just, you know, just wash this person, put them under the dryer real quick, and then I'll use the bathroom. Yeah. You know, or, you know just let me. Yeah, so um, you're putting things on, on hold correct. for yourself. So I'm not yeah. going to eat something. Maybe I might not eat right now because I'm just going to throw in this relaxer real quick, which I'm thinking in my mind is 15 well, minutes. Well, who does a relaxer you real quick? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, so it's yeah. like, that's a stylist for you. So yeah. we'll, we'll naturally be like, it's okay, I'll just put this color in you're you're already here you're on time i'll put the color in and then i'll get something to eat yeah. but then you're not eating yeah you know so, it's so it's, all right so so let me ask you this and i know we still haven't gotten to what the air tint um was but have you made certain changes uh, absolutely okay good absolutely so let's go to the air tint <laughs> what happened so um eventually from july to about uh, august september about September, I started realizing that like I need to get help about the hands because they're not getting any better. How long did it take for you to get like open? Because you said you had open um, sores. Two months. Ooh, that's a, that's three pretty months. aggressive. Yeah, three months. Something. In the beginning, when it was itching and things like, you didn't go to the doctor. I did, and I got like these topical creams that they yeah. gave me to kind of just give away, like almost like it's eczema. So they kind of yeah. give you the topical; it's supposed to go away in a few days, and it did. Was it, it working a little bit? It didn't because I wasn't eliminating the things that I was doing. I was using the cream oh, but still, doing the exact same thing. Oh yeah, things, yeah, 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 yeah. You're right? yeah working against yourself. This basically. is what I'm saying. So yeah. um, I continued using um, creams; it wasn't working. So they said, you know what? This is getting bad. You need to go to a dermatologist, skin, yeah. skin doctor. Right. Went to the skin doctor. He was like, oh, you need topical. Yeah. higher strength yeah gave the topicals higher strength so i just kept kind of using the topicals going Were you back and forth you're still working but i'm long ass for hours? sure i wasn't doing anything different because i didn't so think did you ever stop eventually i had to um did you have to stop because it was so painful i had to stop because it was so painful and it was so inflamed and to the point where it looked the word has to be necrotic can you sh do you have pics that you I, can show me? I absolutely do. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I just noticed you have a little black girl magic pin on. Girl, I am so supportive. You don't even know everything I'm wearing right now is all like black. Uh, black. Yeah, yes, yes. From, like yes. supporting black owned. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, I love it. Yes. So I was, and that's another thing. Uh, part of my journey of healing. Yeah. Um, throughout this whole thing, I've been able to meet so many new people. I've been yeah. outside. I've been trying to, you know, go to new vendors and just like everything that's happening outside in like Durham. Well, we're gonna talk about the healing in a like, minute. We're gonna talk about. Uh, the I've been I've been living. Yeah, like, you yeah. know, I've I've been absolutely um enjoying the the bad yeah. with the good. Like you know what well, I mean? Well you yeah, you gotta like learn from from the lesson. Right? Correct. But let's see the lesson. So I'll let you see that. Oh girl. 
so yeah so that's me sleeping with a glove on one night you um, slept with the glove i was advised that because my hands were so bad to sleep with the glove on the top <gasps> oh. of the steroids i took the glove off the next morning but the glove is what's causing it correct i didn't know at the time and so your hands can i see this your hands look like, oh at least they're healed wow yes. like they look completely different hey we got the same tat yeah, almost right? the same place yeah um oh my goodness girl this is definitely painful it was <gasps> inflamed to the oh point oh my where goodness Look at that. You were not still working when you I was one. absolutely So when still when was working. it? Oh, I was working. Oh my gosh. And that's the saddest part. I was still working. It was very painful, but I had no choice. Did you have to work? I like felt, to in cover my your mind, bills? In my mind, I felt like I had to work. I felt like for my bills, I didn't know what to do with the clients. At the time, I was too embarrassed to go um, to just say, "Hey, this is what's happening with me. I can't do this." So what pushed you to the edge? Yeah, like, um, because. Oh, I'm so sorry that you went through that. Uh, yeah, I'm so sorry that, but at least you know, and, and the reason that we're having this conversation is because there could be other stylists out there that might be experiencing or might Absolutely. have experienced, and you just tied it a little bit to shame because not feeling like you could come out and talk about Correct. what was going on. Correct. So at what point, because, I mean, those are really um, drastic, drastic Over picks. the top. Yeah. Over the top. Open, peeling. So at what point does that, like, what do you do? At what point does your mind say, I have to stop. Not only am I in so much pain, like, look what's happening. I'm. What, are, what does that do to your confidence, first of all? Okay, so I remember posting on my Instagram around April or March of this year yeah. saying, hey guys, this is what's happening with me. So and you kept going. Correct. I had from to. From September to March, uh, October, November, December, January, February, March. Six months. And only in 2023 did you say, I have to stop. Because mm -hmm. I thought at some point my, my immune system will kick in and I shall get better. Like this is supposed to get better on its own. Did you change anything? Did you slow down? on the clients, like their appointments? Did, I did. you change I, your diet? I did. I, I noticed um, while I was working, I was okay on the dry side. But as soon as I got on the wet side, there was an issue. So yeah. <clears throat> but you, I don't feel like you can truly say that because even some of the dry pics that you showed, you're peeling. So, and peeling can be a form of healing with the skin. At that point, it was a part of point of healing. But, but when it's that extreme, like it it's kind of like it was inflamed. Do this. It was inflamed for it like was, months. It was swollen to the point where my joints. I couldn't bend my fingers. Oh, girl. I couldn't crack my knuckles. I couldn't even bend my fingers. It was like walking around, like doing gang signs. I was. I was. Kept, I kept making that joke. I kept making that joke. I'm like my hands. Of all are, things to my say, hands are literally. Hey, we're not gonna gang. throw any gang signs here. <laughs> but my hands were literally like this, like, and I was like doing the. And I was just like past gang members like, yeah. were like invoking inside of her and yeah okay they were literally throwing up gang signs yeah me. i was not able to bend them i wasn't able to it was more like them. eczema yeah, no, no. <laughs> peel skin literally it was yeah. like walking around with these gang signs and so yeah. it was like it was to the point where i was like okay they're clearly inflamed um my hands are not healing on their own what is a doctor saying to you so the dermatologist was like okay this is not working use this this is not working. Use this. And they don't know what the hell they're doing. This is what I'm saying. And, and so, sorry, I didn't let you answer one question. How, what does this do to your confidence? So my confidence was, I want to say my throat chakra was mm -hmm. completely closed. closed. I, I actually posted that. Like, I'm like, this situation has completely closed my chakra. It's shut my confidence level down. I can't imagine what people think about me. I can't mm -hmm. imagine, like, you know, I had thoughts of, I had to quit the business. I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, what's my so client going like to do? You were letting people I was down. defeated. I was yeah. absolutely defeated. I was feeling like I wasn't able to show up. And okay. I haven't been able but to show up. But you've been showing up for 20 years. So Correct. we're not going to discredit Correct. how amazing you've been up till this point, right? Even when you, you 
basically implemented something to protect yourself and your clientele. Correct. And it's backfiring correct. on you. Correct. Correct. And so, did you, a, did you get any therapy um, for this? Like sometimes I feel like I need therapy for yeah. this because I actually had some good supportive friends along the way, and I'm so grateful for them. I, I'll, um, I'll if you don't have a therapist, I'll send you some names. Absolutely. After here. Absolutely. I've been working with a bunch of therapists actually for the last. Uh, two years just okay. to kind of get me through some of the negative thoughts I've I've had yeah. um, with my breakup and just with you know working so hard and why I needed to stop it was a whole thing like yeah. I had to recondition my mind to think listen I gotta put this life jacket on me first because yeah. I am not gonna survive this like, yeah you know? it's, it's when we talk about self-love and like truly loving ourselves. it's not just going to the stylist and get your hair not done or getting your nails done not at all but it's more about truly caring about yourself and one healing your hands healing right. your body healing your mind Correct. right yeah. And that's why I'm just kind of grateful that, like I said, as negative as it, you know, I'm grateful that this happened to me because it's compelled me in a different aspect of my life to do, you know, more mindful things for myself and to say yes to me yeah. before saying yes to somebody else. Yeah. It's like no I think about answer. these things. Yeah, I understand that it's either a hell yes or a hell no. Yeah. And I've really struggled with I think that. it just be a no. That's pretty, pretty I, extreme. I, I really, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, yeah. I, I've really struggled with that because I've always been a yes man. I've always yeah. been a... If you say 11 o'clock p.m., let's do it. Girl. Yeah, so, like I've okay, really so pushed this is, my boundaries. Like, I've not, yeah. I've not learned. Well, you didn't I, have I any didn't boundaries. I didn't have any boundaries, right? Yeah. Right. And yeah. so I felt like the attention I was getting from the clients was love, and it was it was okay. But at the end of the day, I was suppressing myself, yeah. um, overworking, under eating. And yeah. it, it's like, after all, I work inside as well, too. So, yeah. the main so you're not even getting that fresh air, the change of environment. Yeah. yeah. You know, and so yeah. my main contributing factor was the fact that I was working inside and not getting natural light. I worked inside for 12 hours. And then when I decided to realize, when I realized basically in April that um, my hands are not getting better, I'm not getting better on my change, own. Change. Why? It's a long time. Like So I, what did you do? Did you stop working? I didn't stop working. I did checked. Take like a hiatus or? So I basically said I need to be allergy tested. I need mm -hmm. to figure out if something that I'm touching, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, irritant, I'm irritant to it all of a sudden. Yeah. So I got an allergy test um, about six months later. Yeah. It was so you, a long time later. Yeah. And so you do this in approximately April. And what are those results? Did you have an allergy? I did have an allergy. So they say so something in the gloves. Yeah, so yeah. Apparently the sensitivity showed that I was allergic to, you know, rubber, which is the latex gloves, of course. Um, S. Start your morning with a delicious, gentle, natural cleanse. Encourage movement, release gas and remove toxins as you revive your body for the day. Looking to release water weight and kickstart a healthier journey? Try Botanically Blended Gentle Ease Digestive Tea. Shop now on blackprint.com. LS, so sodium lithyl sulfate. That is the bubbly stuff in shampoo. So any oh my God. all those foaming agent things. So, so the, sodium it's lithyl sulfate. It's usually after water. You, water, sodium lithyl sulfate. Yeah. Than the other ingredients. That ingredient is the is the is the emulsifying agent that they use in shampoos, soaps, yeah. body washes. Um. But I, so, have you started to change the products that you use to Absolutely. more natural products? Absolutely. Because you can buy products that say no SLS. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So now I've gone down that route of trying to research products that don't have SLS, you know, benzoyl, yeah. benzoyl peroxide is another one. Alcohol is another one that I'm irritant towards. Jeez. Fragrance. Yeah. Fragrance mix. So oh. anything that has a smell, but is can that you wear synthetic? Yeah. Oh, right. I can't, um, to my hands at that, at that time I was very irritant. And so I couldn't, um, I couldn't utilize use contact it. with yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so when the hand was looking like that like and it was so inflamed i wasn't able to do anything as far as products so i had to stop shampooing i had to stop using relaxers stop using um colors yeah there was a point where i, I cried i was like i have to quit like i, I can't do this if i can't shampoo yeah. my business it's, is over especially when some of the products that you are accustomed to using when you go to these salons they're more high-end products that's the more thing. expensive I use very expensive products, products correct yeah. 
right? Correct. So you want to use the best of the best, but the Correct. best of the best actually have these Thank ingredients right. that are not necessarily the best of the best. Correct. Because my shampoo, I, I won't disclose the name at this time. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, but my one of my shampoos are seventy five dollars. It's a, yeah. a liter bottle. Um, they're salon size. They're very concentrated. So <laughs> I'm gonna come get my hair washed. You know, the, the, but not I, anymore. I, I yeah. know I'm okay now. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm I'm healing every day now, but I mean. At that time, um, mm -hmm. those you know high end seventy five dollars shampoo bottles were my biggest trigger. Cause your hands look great now, Thank right? You. They're definitely on the 95, 98 percent. You can still see the scarring by far, but like you can kind of see the scarring. Yeah, it's it's but, so light that you can see it. Oh, for sure. Right? I I can't tell as much, but for yeah. Sure. You can see it. There was a, actually there was a point where my skin was slothing, is what the word they used. Was and what like, does that mean? So that's when the skin becomes necrotic, meaning it's dying and it's oh like gosh. starting to now remove itself from itself. So when do you start <laughs> listening to you? So I started listening to myself around March when okay. I realized, like I said, it's it was like a light bulb that turned on where I was like, if you fall and get a cut and get scratch your knee, it heals. Yeah. And if you maybe scratch it again. It takes a little bit longer okay. to heal, yeah. but eventually it heals. Yeah. And I was like, wait, my but hands are not getting better. Yeah, it's been like eight months. Right. And yeah. so, like I said, when I say anything on the wet side, so I say I'm in the salon. So on the wet side is shampooing, yeah. Yeah. Um, anything that's considered with water. Like, anything with water. So if there was even a point where I was allergic to the water. So I wasn't washing my hands frequently because yeah. if I touched the water, it would dry it out. There was no way to, you know, it was just a disaster. Yeah, it's too far gone. It was plus, too far gone. Yeah, your pores are, it's everything seeping in. It was right? too far gone. It was necrotic. It was dying. And... It's still your skin. Correct. So it's right? my organ, right? Yeah, I was just going to say, it's your biggest organ. It's my biggest organ. Right? So it's here, but now you're at risk of it, like... Blood infections. All I'm thinking about is my blood now. Yeah. Like, it could essentially Absolutely. be ingested and start Absolutely. impacting other parts. Absolutely. So you start listening and you slow down? Do you stop? So I slow down in the sense of I say, okay, um, I'm inflamed. I'm literally walking around with gang, gang signs. And I'm like, you know what, maybe if I stop doing shampoos, because of everything on that side is a problem, maybe things will get better. Right. So I started, stop doing shampoos, and I started, you know, figuring out a way to say, hey guys, you know, I'm going through this issue, is there any way that you can shampoo before coming? Okay, so some of the things that I had to actually do to heal mm -hmm. myself on this journey um, was see a naturopath. Because okay. I find the doctors. I was going to ask you that. Yeah. yeah, but you did. You started by saying topical, topical. So I assume yeah. So you didn't. when I, when I was in the dermatologist's office and I was getting the topicals, basically what they do is they just basically um, thin the rough area of the skin and it gets it down to like the good area of the skin. However, right. if you're using it for more than three or four months, yeah. it, it goes down to a point where you get to the bone and now there's oh, no, smokes. yeah. So my skin at one point was not able to rebuild itself. It wasn't able to heal itself. Yeah. And so with the topical steroids, making it go thinner and thinner, mm -hmm. it was like to the point where if I itched it, it would peel the skin off. Oh, girl. Right. So, so is this where you started to see the naturopath? Right. So then, like I said, when I reached out to my social media and they were able to kind of give me some feedback as to what they have been doing to heal, they suggested you don't need a doctor you need a natural path so that's mm -hmm. somebody that's not traditional practice yeah. against the green that's not, not in this not in this household <laughs> right <laughs> in this household we have a lot of holistic healing yes right because yes. you know whatever can help naturally mm -hmm. right looking up symptoms and figuring out well what herbs can we use what plants when you came over you were looking at my plants yeah and it's like you have a lot of plants at home so were you Absolutely. then going to your own garden here i'll grab it yeah yeah were you then going to your own garden to see what you can use or using essential oils so essential oils are one of my biggest triggers so i can't actually use essential oh, oils. oh wow okay right so any oil in an aerosol that goes no, not aerosol, like but or even like nothing. Oh, at wow. that time, or it was dro dro any of that stuff. Wow. Okay. Peppermints, tea tree, yeah, any of that stuff that was in the raw form that you kind of put in the oil. And yeah. at that time, I was not. I was that was one of my biggest triggers. What about taking herbal teas? I have a uh, herbal. So, yeah, go ahead. So I want to give thanks for the herbal teas because that's yeah. where that's where the trigger starts for me because like that's what healed me to me. I yeah. had to I had to assess my blood. I had to um, assess my digestive system. I had to assess my gut flora. Mm -hmm. I had to assess all that stuff. So, taking it upon my 
natural you know rasta self you yeah. know i'm more plant-based in that sense um i had to get down to the to the nitty-gritty so yeah. i started drinking dandelion root yeah burdock yeah. root yeah i have burdock yeah right? i take burdock so I started, well. I started we going. sell all of this as well <laughs> on blackprint.com mm -hmm. okay so i'm yeah. i'm i'm a thousand percent advocate of um the herbal of the herbal teas and just herbal cleansing and things like that natural juices i was doing a lot of juice cleansing right um to now boost my vitamin c levels okay um so i was doing a lot of green juices um a lot of juices juices yeah. making them myself of course eliminating sugar completely yeah yeah that was a hard one eliminating coffee completely and um just basically eating a lot cleaner you know, just yeah. to just to reset my digestive yeah. system yeah. you know just to basically purge myself i actually took um which i i am i wish i could be like you know i, I can advocate myself for this product called first cleanse okay from the health food store so it's called first cleanse from the okay. health food store it's basically like um tablet form okay. tinsels okay. that are basically like um milk thistle so i don't oh. know if anybody's yeah. heard of me yeah, yeah, so yeah. milk thistle uh, we tablets. sell that as well this is all on blackheart.com i <laughs> All good stuff, <laughs> yes, right? So yeah. basically, they're just little pills that you take yeah. for a week. It purges you from the inside to kind of break up that um, colon yeah. toxin. Yeah. Flushes your toxins. Have you ever heard of something in Jamaica called... I, I, I heard of it from TikTok. Duck flower? Duck flower, no. No, okay. Well, we have something called Circe as well. That's oh, another yeah, bitter, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. We have Circe. I had to drink Circe tea for a bit as well. So yeah. most of these teas, dandelion, um, you know, all these burdock roots and things are blood cleansers. Yes. Right? So once you got this problem in your body, it's like in your blood. So I tried yeah. to cleanse my blood. Yeah. Right? I, so I was taking one um, from Detox Now. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, same yeah. concept. So I basically I did a colon cleanse. Mm -hmm. I did a blood cleanse. Yeah. So I... Purge my blood, purge my 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 stomach and everything else and my intestines, and I found one I lost weight, so yeah. my, the swelling in my body went down completely. Right. I started taking a product called Lymphadrenal. Oh yeah. So that's also another um, naturopathic, um, holistic medicine that you basically take in a drop bowl, drop form, you know, in your water. Okay. Just drink it for the day. So thirty drops every day for you yeah. know three months. It basically um, suppresses the or takes these nymphs going down yeah. and, and flushes the body of inflammation. Yes. So when I was so swollen, it was like game changer. So yeah. I started doing, like I said, acupuncture yeah. to block the itching. Were you doing any um, reflexology? So reflexology, no, but acupuncture, yes. Okay. So the acupuncture I got like in my head, in my hands, in my mm -hmm. feet, in my... Um, and my legs, everything else, that was just to block the itchiness. Because yeah. once you came in, con once I came in contact with the irritant substance, mm -hmm. it would it would basically irritate from two to eight weeks. Wow. Once con in contact. Right. So if I'm using it every day, the eight like the day one is every day. Right. You start back from day one every day. So for months, yeah. I was reacting. You're, oh, you're just resetting. Literally. You're just redoing it. Redoing literally, it. Redoing literally. It. And yeah. the doctor's like, just take the topical. Just put the yeah. topical. Put the topical. And my skin's getting thinner. And I'm using these things every day. But what, at what part did you start using the start? Did you seek out the naturopath? So I started seeking the naturopath around April when I went to my social media. And I Damn, was like, guys, this, year. this is what I'm telling you. So it was, month, it was about eight months in. And I realized I'm not getting better. Um... The hands are basically getting worse and i'm like help yeah. help help what can i do right yeah. so once i seeked a natural path um she started doing her stuff immediately she was just like this is bad so i started using a barrier cream um mm -hmm. medi honey i think it's called medi honey okay. so there's a medi medical grade honey that okay. they put in a, on a cream base so you put that on the hands okay. it acts like a barrier and it allows it allows my skin to basically did you stop heal. using the gloves while you're using completely that? okay because once i think about april i got allergy tested and so i knew exactly what i was or may say may i got mm -hmm. allergy tested got allergy tested in may and i knew at that point what i was allergic to so at that point i was like okay I'm you're gonna eliminate eliminate all of that. Mm -hmm. eliminate but around eight mm, save March mm -hmm. I was like everything on the wet side like I said is, yeah. is a problem so I stopped doing the wet services so mm -hmm. everybody tried to but tell your them. hands were still reacting they were still reacting because other people were washing the hair with shampoo that I was also allergic oh, shit. to shit I didn't even think about that this is what I'm saying so, so even that though didn't even it was like it helped a concept but still not fully because right. yeah you're still um in contact right with right it. Yeah. right so i actually wanted to show you something sure. which sounds so i just wanted to show you is this the rose camera. quartz so this is a rose quartz type of himalayan salt okay 
So this is a Himalayan salt block that I got from a spa in Uxbridge called um, Holistic Salt Spa Cave and Therapy. Shout out to them. Okay. You can always hashtag them in the, in the thing, but they have yeah. healed my life. They have definitely taken this allergy to a different level. So this yeah. is a Himalayan salt block. Yeah. Um, that I basically keep around me at all times. So it's okay. actually salt. Yeah. I can melt it in my hands. I can yeah. rub it on my um, on my irritants. I can rub it on all my stuff, and it acts like polysporin, but the holistic version. So does it um, absorb? It heals. Okay. So it based, So for example, if I had like a cut on my hand or something from like a, something that like irritated me, and I'm like. Oh my god it's gonna act funny yeah i could rub the salt this same salt on my hands or i could just hold it in my hand wait till it gets warm and just kind of like emulsify it yeah and it, the next morning the cut will be sealed okay wow so this is and sometimes i have I actually have the crystals i put the crystals in warm water cold yeah, water I say, and i soak, soak my hands, hands. Okay. absolutely and do this, you ever soak your hands with also the herbs and um i haven't i've only done salt okay and cold water and or warm water yeah but this is this Himalayan salt yeah has been proven to heal my eczema my yeah. irritant and like I said it's acting it acts like polysporin right. so when I use it on the open source it by the next day is heals it, like I'm a thousand percent um, understanding what this Himalayan salt does for right. for for you and for your body yeah. for pimples yeah. Um, for bad scars even like for scars I've had scars I've, I use my salt on the scars Wow and it, it's a good um, it's, it's a game option because I would say one of the, but you also, you just already said that you cannot use it. One of the essential oils that I recommend is usually lavender is really good at healing certain, uh, not necessarily scars, but like if you burn yourself or something like that, but then here you're given another option when you cannot use something cannot such use that. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know if it's just um, temporarily, like I said, I mm -hmm. also realized that like, Almost like the process of elimination. So mm -hmm. when you have an irritant, you're supposed to kind of stay away from it for a bit. Exactly. And then slowly introduce it. And see what's causing the reaction. Correct. Mm -hmm. So I've been slowly trying to reintroduce my shampoo in small doses. Girl, why? Because I'm just like, am I allergic to this stuff for real? Or am I... <laughs> I don't understand why you didn't believe. No, I'm, I'm, you know what? Like I said, I'm trying not to... I'm trying to figure out if the vitamin D was the issue. Right. Or if it's like, am I physically allergic to things? Right. So it's a process of elimination. I, when I was super allergic, I had to eliminate it fully. Everything, yeah. Now that it's been, you know, four or five months, I feel like I'm healing. I want to try to introduce it slowly because these are good shampoos. It's not like they're bad shampoos. Yeah, and you've just, been using them for 20 odd for years. For a long time. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. not like I want to say, okay, all of a sudden I'm irritated towards it. It's not a good product. I'm not advocating that. I'm yeah. just saying I'm allergic to it at yeah. this time. It's a great product. Yeah. However, at this time, I'm you're, yeah, I'm you're having towards it towards it. it. I'm having an allergy towards it. So I've been slowly trying to reintroduce certain things mm -hmm. just to see how I respond. Yeah, you're gauging what your tolerance Correct. is. Yeah. Correct. Correct. And, yeah, so and, and that's how you reintroduce things back into I'm you. trying slowly but yeah. surely. So I'm trying to see what it is or if it's now that, like I said, my vitamin D levels are completely have gone up because it's been summer i've been sitting outside i've been taking my shots i've been you know now that i'm assuming the vitamin d levels are better yeah i'm thinking is it the vitamin d or mm -hmm. is it the actual allergy to the irritants yeah because yeah, those could just be like what is the actual source those Correct. could be other contributing factors but that not, might not be this the root cause exactly yeah so you're trying to I identify the root cause Correct. i got you yeah. Correct. and so yeah. i'm continuously taking my vitamin d because it was shown on paper that i was super deficient low. Yeah. Right. And like I said, super low means no immunity, meaning allergy could easily show its face. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's, I it's, think that's what happened. It's um, an important part of like trying to understand your body um, better. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's weird because you go so long without even having to think about these things um, until you have a reaction where Correct. you have no choice. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Yeah. It's like almost like our body shows us these signs, but we ignore them because we're like, it's okay, I'm all right. Yeah. Even a yeah. headache, as simple as that is, like a headache could mean dehydration or or lack of sleep, or it could be hungry. Yeah. We just like be... let's pop a tine and all. Let's yeah. not pop, yeah, pop let's a tine and all. Let's figure out what was I doing prior to the headache. Like, yeah. You know. Yeah. So. Well, what what's the root cause what's of the, the headache? Root? Exactly. Yeah. Because sometimes it's just when they say you feel pain, it's like a trigger response. Your, is being sent to your brain, your Correct. body's feeling something. Correct. But it could be something that you 
our need exactly yeah and so like in all of this i want to say we need to pay attention more to our bodies and yeah. more to the signs that our bodies um are are, are, are saying because mm -hmm. we eliminate we we ignore them for so long till their alarms achieve irresistibly soft and hydrated skin with a honam sugar scrub whether it's lemon turmeric or lime polish away dead dull dry skin lift dirt and stimulate a natural healthy glow then simply moisturize with honam shea butter to reduce blemishes and marks love your honam shopblackprint.com Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I definitely it, felt signs. Yeah. But it's the alarms that like, tough to go off in the end. Ooh, we're like, wait, what's to the fire right here? I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. And as black women, I think that we've been designed to believe that, like, we got it. We don't need the help. I'm okay. Yeah, no. We need the help. You know, I've learned but, that over the yeah. years that like, we need the help. But we've been conditioned to believe that asking for help is a weakness or something that, like, it's not a good thing. Yeah, you're right. Condition that we got to kind of figure it out ourselves. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Right. And so... Yeah trying to get out of that i mean i'm out of the mentality i understand that it's the community that builds the the child brings the bills the business builds everything and so i i understand that asking for help as far as um, that being weakness that goes it's now become a strength of mine yeah like i've been able to ask help and been able to get help and now you're going to be asking for help for everything for everything so girl, you remember that bill I wish Remember I when you were sending right? money? <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah. But yeah, you I have know. those herbs. But yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know, just asking for help and just mm -hmm. asking, you know, just advocating myself as a story and saying, listen, use yeah. my example. It's not going to work for you. Yeah. You know, yeah. Doesn't, it doesn't work out. Ask for help. Stop. Ask for help. Come, I, I just you know. said it to my son like yesterday or something. Yeah. Day before. Mm -hmm. Ask for help. Right? Because we're conditioned to think. 100%. We got to do it by ourselves. But why do we need to, again, suffer in silence? This is it. And I'm, I'm over the suffering in silence. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm happy to be here and be able to, you know, say this out loud and say, hey, you know, I went through something. But, you know what? I'm You're on the other sure side. The other, you know, I'm pretty sure I'm not alone. I'm yeah. pretty sure there are other oh, people yeah. that need to, you know, figure out what's going on. Because I've seen a lot of people with eczema in, in the hairdressing business. And yeah. it's like. Is it something that's going on inside them, or is it a product? Are we irritated towards products? Or, yeah, I, you know, I have or? eczema, but um, I kind of was like allergic to all kinds of things as a child, like dairy products. Dairy is a big thing too. Yeah, I had and to eliminate yeah, that. Yeah, and and it, it's hereditary in, in our family with a couple of kids, but it's really about how do you tolerate, like how do you kind kind of control it, right? Yeah, what yeah. can you do? What are this natural things you yeah, can implement yeah. into your your, your practice because yeah. I, I found a lot of people that had eczema reached out to me and they were like get off milk leave yeah. the lactose alone you know yeah get off the dairy out? Yeah. Like, oops sorry okay. yeah but I heard, I heard a lot of people ask me if I was stressed out and like mm -hmm. what's going on in my life like recently that you know and I had to kind of think at first I was like nothing I'm fine I'm good <laughs> But then I was yeah. like, wait a second, I'm actually this is bothering me. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah suppressing, suppressing a bunch of things that like that's very smart of you though. You know, yeah. I'm, it's humbling of me because at the same time, like I said, I wasn't able to bring myself to that space yeah. at one time. I was just like, no, I'm not. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Fine. It's, it's when we start being honest with ourselves, right? I had to be honest with myself and say, listen, you're actually a depressed girl. You're 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 actually I'm going hard. To you're laugh actually going that. hard for no reason. Like yeah, yeah, slow down. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Why, why are you going so hard? And then when I looked down at my hands and it was like God sent me a couple life bolts. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. listen, man, he's talking to me and I'm just ignoring it. You're just ignoring it. it. I'm just ignoring it. Like maybe it. if we make it a little worse, she'll pay attention. Yeah, She's no. still not listening. Yeah, no. <laughs> you know, so I've I've learned a lot, like just from stopping and just saying, you know what, enough. Yeah, girl. Enough. Like I gotta look about me now. I gotta put the life jacket on me. I've like yes. I said, this has led me down a path that like I'm so excited to like yeah. visit and experience at this point. So like yeah. Yeah, I'm like, excited for you. Yeah, I look I'm forward to like what's next and like, you know, like just where this road takes you, this uncertainty road, because I don't know where this road takes me. But for yeah. me, it's just like, OK, this is what it was. And I hope I can help others. And like, let's see where it takes me. Yeah. And and think about where you want it to take you. Correct. Right. Because Correct. if you become more intentional about, you know, what, I want to speak about this. I yeah. want to be on panels speaking about this I absolutely and do. talking about your healing journey then get on those panels because your voice and your your experience um, was so that other people could also learn from correct. it. Correct. Correct. Because I know other people are going to do the same thing. Overwork, mm -hmm. 
and overcompensate and yeah. say, I'm okay, I'm good over yeah. here. And then they start looking at their physical body like, wait, what's happening? Yeah, over here? I'm not good over here. I'm not good over here. Yeah. We need to we need to admit it sometimes to say, listen, you know what? I'm not okay. Yeah. I need to take a break or I need to talk to somebody. I need to stop. But right now, I'm not okay. And it's yeah. hard. Yeah, and it's, and it's not a bad thing. Right? It's hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard sometimes to just be like, you know what? I need to look about me. Yeah. It's, it's not easy, but I'm, I'm learning. Uh, so I thought my clients were honestly going to perceive the situation as a negative situation, but um, I'm overwhelmed by the way that they have responded and how they've you know been able to give me the time needed to, mm -hmm. to heal. and People you can know. be kind, and people are people, and they understand people. Correct. And I feel like the one thing that has come out of like that two-year period of locking down is um, more people... Are a bit more sensitive to what other people might be feeling because yeah. everybody else is kind of going through their ups and their downs um so you, you would be no different yeah. and it, it's hard to to understand that as a business owner because you just want to make your clientele happy absolutely and so i hid my situation for a long time because i just like on the on the while putting yourself in danger 100 percent, like a thousand percent but right. i was more i was more in the mentality that i'm a business person they don't they won't understand they just need like you know for example hey i'm going to jamaica can you do my hair on friday and i'm like looking at my hands like they're going to jamaica I gotta <coughs> figure out a way. I gotta, I gotta do their hair as my regular client. She's not where else she's she gonna go. She's going to Jamaica. Yeah. You look down and you're like, hands don't fail me now. So what's changed? Because it, it, it's, it's your hands were so, so extreme. So even though you're saying Jamaica, Jamaica, and and you're right, it is the people pleasing. Completely people pleasing. That's what kind of got me here in the first place. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So. But I think that's how we are. It's the customer service. Correct. And right? that's, that's what it is. Yeah, it's the customer service, which is not necessarily people-pleasing. It's the customer service, Correct. right? Providing the best possible service for your clientele, for your customers. Correct. But not at the detriment of your, at the detriment of your health. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And that's why I appreciate my regular clients in the sense that they know me, so they know, you know, hey, she might be busy, you know, but, you know, just outside people don't always understand that, but you do try to keep up the standard so that other people can, you know, feel like they're important too. Mm -hmm. However, like, if Oprah answered every email on her own, mm -hmm. it would be almost impossible to do other things. Yeah, absolutely. You know? so, so what has changed in your business now um, or what has changed in your lifestyle now because your hands look great so yeah, yeah so what has changed being vulnerable has allowed me to go you know forward to social media and kind of reach out to my people as opposed to them reaching out to me I reached out to them and yeah. I was like hey guys at this point in my life I'm embarrassed I'm shameful look what's going on with me I need help yeah. you know so I actually went to my platform and I posted saying you know it's eight, it's March my hands are falling off I'm embarrassed. My throat chakra has now completely closed. Yeah. I'm not able to provide the service that I'm used to providing. Help. Like, yeah. I, I actually and I'll have tell to you, say your help. throat chakra at that point was not closed. It was open because you actually asked At that help. point, I was like, I had to scream it out. I was yeah. like, yeah, no, you no longer will hold me down. Yeah. You know, so I was like, yeah, no, I, I recognize that, hey, this is a shame and a pride. Like, and on the level of emotions, it's just so low yeah. that I have to raise my vibrations. I have yeah. to be able to, like, break out of this and yeah. so I, I went to my platform and I said hey guys I need your help yeah and so people started reaching out saying my girl I'm going through this too hey, girl. I was like so shocked people so are, these are other stylists like, stylists regular people yeah you know and I just had to say like you know what did what's going on in your life why did this happen how did this happen yeah. everyone said this a lot of people said the same thing stress yeah yeah, because stress will do that to you, right? And then, yeah, stress will do that to you. So look at that, stress. how you, excuse me, sorry, you put it out there because you just couldn't anymore. I couldn't take and it. And you took it. You I, I, took it. Girl, I took it. Yeah, and I so you it. couldn't take it anymore. And just like that, you found a whole new community of people Completely. that were either going through it, healing from it. Had you know, stories about it. Yeah. You know, had suggestions about it. Yeah. You know, and, and that's what compelled me to my healing. That's so that great. vulnerability. That, must, that alone, yeah. Go on, finish your statement. So that vulnerability has is what compelled me to heal today. Yeah. That's why I feel like I've healed today, um, on a on a spiritual level, 
on a physical level because this is like the physical but on a spiritual level I've been able to apologize you know to you know in my mind just like people that like it kind of brings it to a point apologize. where like you know just in the sense of like it's brought you it, it's when you go through things in life it humbles you yeah and so it might make you look up and say listen if I've hurt anybody God forgive me you know yeah. what I mean if I've done something in my life that I you know I'm not aware of forgive me yeah you know so I've been able to humble myself in the spirit I've been able to reach out to God and be, come, become closer to him yeah you know he's healed me through this I've been able to connect with other people yeah you know and now we're having this conversation yeah you know so a lot has changed since then yeah you know I've been able to like so what actually healed me what revealed in the allergy test was I'm super vitamin d deficient mm -hmm. that's the sun that's the sun and oh. that's when working 12 hours in the in the, in the, oh, in the, in the inside so <laughs> yeah. we all have that deficiency yeah thing. yeah 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 well i mean we melanated people that is our our, our power source right. right we need to be in the sun we right. need that so what i think that what i want like my message to be throughout this whole thing mm -hmm. is that people our people need to understand that vitamin d mm -hmm. is a serious thing when you're deficient yeah because <clears throat> vitamin d is our army that's our immunity that's our our fighters so when we have low low vitamin d we basically have no immunity right vitamin d equals immunity okay. and when you don't expose yourself to the sun you have no ability to absorb your nutrients that's yeah. one thing that i've noticed that i mean throughout the process i've, I've been able to lose weight I've been able to gain weight and mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've been able to understand why I'm losing certain weights and li little things like that, that we can all get into all that but right. I mean it's a science having my vitamin D low I wasn't able to absorb my nutrients so I is there anything I eat it's like IBS yeah irritable bowel syndrome yeah because as soon as your body takes it in the lack of vitamin D it's just going out yeah so yeah. I've been able to understand that um, so now, like, has your routine changed like so I Start your morning with a delicious, gentle, natural cleanse. Encourage movement, release gas, and remove toxins as you revive your body for the day. Looking to release water weight and kickstart a healthier journey? Try Botanically Blended Gentle Ease Digestive Tea. Shop now on blackprint.com. I take vitamin D shots every mm -hmm. three to four, three weeks to six weeks. So every okay. three to six weeks, I take a vitamin shot of 50,000 international units. Okay. I also take 5,000 international units a day of vitamin D orally. Okay. Um, I also sit in the sun as often as possible. And when I say I sit in the sun as often as possible, I cancel mm -hmm. or I book my appointments according to the sun. Yeah. So yeah. it's two o'clock. I try not to be working at two o'clock. Yeah. I'm going to take off my meeting. <laughs> No, it's, it's I usually have back-to-back -back meetings. It's a real thing. So if any of my um, work employees are watching this, I will... Now you know when I book that piece. No, it's a real thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a real thing. So I've I've been able to bring my clients outside with me mm -hmm. and say, you know, hey, it's my 2 o'clock break. Let's go outside and get some fresh air. Yeah. I mean, I may not have to necessarily stop working. I can continue working. However, we're taking a break and I have to go outside for my own health yeah. to absorb the sun. Are they understanding? Um, are they like, I know, this you know, just take me out to the sun you know, and, the, and it's hot outside today. <laughs> but certain room, know, you know, which room, you know, as they say that room, certain room, know their corner. I know, I, I know, I know. Is that a Jamaican term? It is. So it's like, I, I know, know monkey know which tree to climb. Same thing. Yeah. yeah so yeah. you kind of know who to bring outside and who not to bring oh, outside. So then the ones that you don't want to bring outside, just don't put them between that time frame. It's more like. I would be like, okay, give me a minute. I got to take my 15 minutes. So I, yeah. I have this lasting joke. I'm taking my 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, even though I'm self-employed and I run my own business. You should still I have need, your 15 take, minutes. Correct. And, and in the grand scheme of things, it's 15 minutes. That's not even a lot of time. Correct. It's not. So my 15 minutes, I make sure that I'm either eating in the sun mm -hmm. or I'm outside in the sun. So that, right. you know, I'm absorbing my vitamin D. I've mm -hmm. taken my oral medicine. I've taken, you know, what I need to take in the daytime. And like I'm this. absorbing my sun. I'm making sure that it's getting in me, and then I go back inside. Yeah. So that. So you want to sit here and be back? I'll right. be back. <laughs> Literally. So that's the new me. Yeah. The new me is like, I'm gonna take a 15. I'll be back. The old me was, we're gonna Just grind until working. midnight, and then I'm getting no sun, and yeah. then I'm sick because of this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The so, new you is investing in loving you. Absolutely. And and you know what? After pouring into people i have to say honestly pour i probably don't know how to pour into mine but pour i'm learning like mm -hmm. it's like and i feel like like i said 
we f I we feel like we're loving people. We yeah. sorry. We feel like we're loving ourselves when we're pouring into people. I feel mm. like I get that satisfaction. Like when I pour into my clients, yeah, you, I feel like I'm loving myself. But you, but you do because there, there's there's a gratification. There's a, absolutely, there's a gratification in giving. Absolutely, right, and that could be one of your love languages. Absolutely, right? mm -hmm. absolutely, because you work in the service industry. Absolutely, I yeah. absolutely love the before and after I love the process I love the feeling that I give my customers and like how they feel afterwards however I'm depleted after that yeah. if I haven't eaten if I haven't yeah. you know if I don't pour into myself during the process yeah so I've I've, I've spread out my 24 hours and I realize that I need certain amount of hours in the day for myself yeah and yeah. so and and also like preserving your energy oh, and wow. all of that right that's a big deal too yeah yeah, yeah. that's great I think it's important to know what we need for ourselves because we go through <coughs> years and I find that these life-changing impacts these I want to say these shifts are happening with maybe some women that are a bit older because they've gone through so much time um oh someone yesterday said conditioning like condition to do do things a certain way oh yeah right and now when they realize wait a minute this is not even working like this is or this has worked fine we're not even gonna say it has not worked but like it's not working anymore correct and and it's showing that ugly face is showing that it's not working so what changes do we need to make correct. to accommodate that so we can be healthier right i, I think that's something mind that, body and soul right I, think, I absolutely think that that's something that has transitioned over the 20 years mm -hmm. of doing hair and just being a hairstylist like things are not the same as they were 20 years ago like when mm -hmm. we used to you know have the salon all busy and it was like 65 people in the salon you know next 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 someone's under the dryer like we're working yeah. by appointment now so it's like it's definitely more condensed like it's just a yeah. slower pace so yeah it, it's kind of like um <laughs> like a tv show like when you see those hair shop shows and you, ha you have time to do me i need a curl like, i need a perm i need a yeah come <laughs> y'all well, how long's the wait 45 minutes we'll get yourself some and then it's like this so that's culture. what we're, that, that's, that's so, what we're used you know, to. So yeah. that's what I'm used to. And I've been in this for 20 years. So this is what we're used to. So yeah. slowing down has been something that I've had to wrap my mind around. It feels like a failure. Yeah. Um, saying no feels like a failure. Mm -hmm. Not being busy because you want to not be busy feels like a failure. There's a guilt that we get yes. when we're not doing something. Right. And this is why I believe therapy is so important because we need to change our mindset of how we're thinking about it. we get guilty it's it's um i think they say it's like a trauma response right we're, because we don't know how to relax I or, we feel, agree. or we feel guilty when we try to relax i 100 percent agree um especially considering i'm coming from a parents where mm -hmm. you know a, a generation of parents were like the you wife, laying down the, you ain't doing nothing 100 percent Mm -hmm. You know, so being not progressive feels like you're not being progressive. And Relaxing if, feels like you're stealing something. Like Yeah, there's no sleeping in, there's no this, there's no that. And it's like, um, you know, it, it, no shade to how we've lived, um, but it's been kind of passed down to them and passed down. And if we go back, right, I almost attribute almost everything to enslavement, right? Yeah. Because, like, a lot of things to enslavement, not everything, but a lot of things to enslavement because... There was no rest. Yeah, that's what there I'm saying. There was no rest, right? And so that gets passed down generation after generation, yeah. and here we are. And this is a different time, right? So there's a time that we grew up in, Correct. but like the time that our kids are growing up in, they're basically just saying, they want to work online. Nah, they stop wanna, they that. They want to set and forget things. They don't want to yeah. work half as hard. Yeah, so, exactly. Where we were okay with that, right? Yeah, we seen hard workers. We wanted to work hard. Our mm -hmm. kids see hard workers. Was like They're like, we don't want to work that no, hard. No, they rather they're just figure, figure out, out how to do it smarter. We're trying to figure out how to do it smarter. And so yeah. I had to learn the hard way that working hard is not actually working smart. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I, I have a lot of good customers, like I said. So I've been able to um, work smarter and not harder in the sense of I can take two people instead of six people and kind of make sense of the day yeah you know what i mean so like that's kind of what i've been doing instead of hustling and killing myself to you know answer every call and just to get everybody in which is what is part of my guilt i actually feel bad yeah. for not answering every call yeah. and not showing up for every single yeah. person but and you're already so busy <sighs> that's what that's what kills me wait mentally. so have you how like have you fully been able to let go of that guilty feeling 
I have because I realized that the ones that I have been able to show up for, I they know I know that I've put my hundred percent into them. Good. And so if I'm if I if you allow yourself to wait and patiently get to me, you know that once you're in my chair, once you're in my space, it's a hundred percent catered to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the ones that I can get to and the ones that I get to they appreciate being in my chair yeah. as opposed to you didn't respond or you didn't get to me. Once you get to know me, you'll realize that once you're in my, my environment, it's all about you. Yeah. You are the star of my show. What's the biggest lesson you would say that you learned for yourself? For myself? In this journey. Having boundaries and just setting them up knowing that I didn't have any before. I didn't have any boundaries Did before. Did you see the need for them before? I definitely didn't see the need for them before, but I see the need for them now because, like I said, the rest for me is more important than... I, it's hard to say the money. I'm trying to now figure out ways to um, be in the same business, make money smart you without having shift to physically... In, yeah, do the work. Yeah, so like, I'm, there's a lot of things that I've been able to creatively think while I've been off yeah. and collaborate with other people. I'm here now, and so I'm grateful to even be here. You yeah, know? So, and I'm grateful to Yeah, be and I mean, yeah. before this, I would have been too busy. Yeah. I would have been working now, and I wouldn't have been able to separate myself from the business yeah. and to be able to do these personal things. So now it's like... Being able to block my calendar off from things that I have to do for myself and my children yeah. is something that I've now learned and now a hundred percent implement in yeah. my in my life going forward. Yeah. Well, right? I will say that you look amazing. Thank you. And I'm so glad to see that you've healed. Thank you. Thank um, you. I think we bumped into each other in June, right? Yeah. And you were like, oh, "Have you heard about my journey?" So your throat chakra yeah, is definitely, definitely open. open. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely no over shameful. Yeah, anyway. yeah, and you had never had a reason to be. But I think it's so important that you're sharing this story because somebody might be going through something similar and they're, and even if it's not similar, there's that relation of feeling shame or, or feeling like you can't stop what you need to do or not taking care of yourself in your, because you want to do what you need, because you're doing what you need to do for your business. But I mean, you, there's no business if there's no you, yeah. right? And I mean, I just think that financially as well, too, being a mother, of course, a financially, mom, right? Like, you know, being a, being a, I hate the word single mom because, like, there's so much community around me. I don't even feel like a single mom sometimes. And I want to say mm -hmm. shout out to my community, but because they make me feel like I'm not a single mother. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? But, like, just being Except a, for when those bills come, they just pay some of them bills. Never, just joking. Never, never, <laughs> never, never. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> It's then so you're true. single all over again. It's so true. <laughs> yeah. It's so true. But thank God for the gift of the talents. And yeah, overcompensate. Yes, yes. But you keep know, it like, positive. Yeah. yeah. But you know, like just being broke doesn't feel good. It's yeah. just flat out period. You know. Yeah. And if you don't like have the reserve and things like that, and even if you do, you don't want to deplete your savings. Yeah. There's never a point in your life when you say it's the perfect time to take a break because you will never feel like you have enough. Yeah. Bills always come, and so there was a point in my life, like I said, where I just didn't think I could afford to stop. Yeah. I couldn't I didn't think that I mean supporting myself and my children. I couldn't stop. How was I gonna afford it? Yeah. But God made a way. Yeah. God made a way and I wanted to say shout out to God because he made a way. Yeah, and you and you're he you're made a way. You're doing so much better now oh, yeah. and you're no longer sacrificing yourself. Absolutely not. Like now I say hell yes or hell no. And yeah. so that was a hard one for me before. Um, I'm learning how to say hell yes and hell no, and I have to stand firm in that because I'm a yes man. I'm a crowd pleaser, and I, well, I would say, say I if used to be. Yeah, I was just about to say you that. Know? Like, if you know, don't say you are. If yeah, that's a change yeah, that you've I'm, made. I'm, yeah. I, I I actively say yes, and then I actively say no. Yeah. Like I'm more mindful of why I'm saying no. Yeah. And why well, I'm unapologetically, no. which is not always yeah. easy. We say it's these not words. Easy. It's not easy. Yeah. Cause the old me wants to be there for everyone. The new me understands I can't be. Yeah, you have to be there for you first. Correct. Oh. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So, you know, if I were to advocate for anyone, I would just say, listen, like, sometimes in life we, we don't admit to ourselves that we need to look about ourselves. It yeah. doesn't matter whether it's just to take a break or just to feel this headache and just take a nap. It doesn't matter what it yeah. is. We need to pay attention yeah, to our get, bodies. Yeah, we get so guilty about those things. Yeah. I, I wasn't feeling well yesterday and I know like even just calling in sick or saying hey I can't you just feel so bad but but I'm happy that you have surpassed that I'm happy that you're working on that Absolutely. that you're great with either saying yes or no I'm thankful that you said yes for this yes. evening yeah, yeah. but more importantly that you're loving yourself 
<clears throat> correct and that's something that i've learned along the journey that like even though i thought i loved myself i understand now why i love myself because me loving me allows me to pour out into other people and other and then to the you know into others it allows me to show up in the way that i authentically need to show up you 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 um you you said you loving you allows you to pour into other people but you loving you allows you to keep doing what you want to do oh what you want to do like other people on the back burner like you're so humble in that sense that every time you talk about loving something you always talk about i'm now great and i can give to other people i'm now great and yeah. i can do for my kids but you're now great so that you can do for you for correct. michelle correct right, right? And, and these are some of the things like i said that i've been able to pour into michelle like to pour into myself i've always you know, seeing myself doing things like this, but being so busy and always pouring into others and saying yes to them has not allowed me to be calm enough to have an opportunity to do things like this. And so, like I said, it's humbled me to understand that saying no also says yes to these things. Yeah. You know, it's, it's given me space and time to align myself to do these things. And so it's, it's kind of part of the balance that I've been asking for, you know, for the universe to ordain for me. I've been looking for balance for a long time and just this allows for the balance for just me to be like you know mindful and saying you know no to this but yes to this yeah. but having not being able to say no to that would not allow me to, to say, say yes, yes to it. this yeah. yeah you know so yeah well michelle this has been a great conversation very insightful um i encourage people to open their throat chakra and just kind of reach out to their community if they feel like they're experiencing something it doesn't have to be apples to apples but if you're feeling something and you're kind of suffering in silence, there's there's freedom, Absolutely. freedom in expressing that openly and, and asking for help. Absolutely. Right? Really just kind of saying, I need a bit of help with what's going on. Because um, I'm so glad you're over suffering in silence. Oh, and I hope, sure. I hope that this story definitely encourages other people to kind of reach out to their community. Um, even if they don't know who to reach out to. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Michelle, for coming on Voices and Vibes. <laughs> Thank um, you. Is there any other parting words? I mean, let everybody know where they can follow you and find you. Okay, so I'm on TikTok, like I said, Mishy Hair, Mishy underscore hair three, Instagram, Mishy Hair, Mishy underscore hair. Um, you can find me there. You can hit me up there. Go ahead and follow. Follow the journey. I will be definitely continuously posting about my journey uh, um, alongside of other things, of course. But I just want to take time to say thank you guys for watching. If you made it this far. Um, <laughs> they definitely made it this far. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for having me. I, I, Like I said, there was a time in my life where I didn't think I would even get to a point of talking about this without shedding a tear. But yeah. Um, yeah, it's and, humbling. And, yeah. It's humbling. Yeah, and shedding tears is, is I find that there's strength in that as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, so yeah. thank you again. Thank you everyone for watching Voices and Vibe where we amplify the voices of black owned businesses. And it's always a vibe. Mm -hmm.